that's just undoable. <laughs> Here's a graded one coming back around. Find yours, pass it on. So I want to give you a heads up. The homework for Friday is really important and it's also a little longer. So uh, and it's it's gonna be over what we do today, which is gonna be uh, Everything's coming together now, and it's going to feel harder. There's every, you have to have a grasp of everything we've done so far, and there's lots of symbols, and you got to know what all the symbols mean. So uh, in terms of working on your homework, plan at least two times in the next you know, 48 hours to work on it. Because what happens is you, know, you dig into it, you try the problems, you think about it as hard as you can, and then you do something else for a while. You work out, you play racquetball, you work on another class, you know, you do laundry, and then you come back to it, and then suddenly it's, some things start making more sense when you try a second time. If you try to sit down in 45 minutes and finish the homework, it's, it's probably gonna be a losing proposition. So I would say at least two times plan to sit down and work on it. More would be even better, okay? I just wanna give you a warning, the homework, you know, it's, we're getting to the we're getting to the calculus now. This is hard stuff, okay? But we we're we're shooting our sights high, and we're many of us and will attain it or get almost there, and that's a that's a very good thing. Okay, so uh, here's a picture that should look familiar, like the stuff we've been doing. Here in the back, the numbers might be a little small. You might there's some dust up here. You might want to move up. Are these new desks? Some of them. Are they, like they, they always those big ones? No. No, I just, I'm just, I'm just noticed it for the first time. Anyway, okay, so uh, here's a graph, many of the features of which should look familiar, and then here's a statement. So I've got some questions. I want you to get a partner, and you're going to answer these questions with your partner, and we'll, we'll do like two at a time. Do I have all today's homework? It's coming in. So take a minute to answer these questions. And so this whole page is pretty much review and reorienting ourselves to what's coming next. All right, so we just want to reorient ourselves to all that we've learned so we have a fighting chance on the, when it gets harder, okay? Go. I've given up on final round. It's terrible. I know. 
Okay, so I tried to make a little brighter here. Okay, so what kind of function is, so this is an implication. I haven't told you, but based on the situation here, the context, what can you imply? What type of function can you imply that the blue curve is? What kind of function is that? Calvin. Is it the actual rate um, change of rate function? So he wants the actual rate of change function. Okay, some people are nodding. That's what it is. So, and we know that because we're forming a step function from it, right? We're forming a step function from it. So, therefore, if we're going to form a step function, we, we form step functions from rate functions. From rate functions. Okay? So, what kind of function is the pink step graph? What's that? Is that a different kind of function? Okay, so you're talking about the details of it, or actually that's a, a question that's coming up. So, but just in general, what kind of function is it? All right. Is it, so is it another rate of change graph? What's that? Uh, yeah, excellent. So it's like a simulation or a pretend graph of the of the original one, but it's based on what he said? Constant rates, right? So we, we make a pretend or a, a simulation or a replica, but with constant rates. Okay? Why do we do that? Big question here. Why do we create this? If we already have the rate function, why do we need this replica of constant rates? Patrick? Uh, because the non-constant rates make it uh possible to use our given uh, y equals k change in x function. Okay, so and why do we want to do that? So he's talking about delta y equals k delta x. Uh, so we can find an accurate approximation of what our y values will be. Right, so we're at, this is the rate of change of y. And we're after, after the original quantity y. So we, we have this rate of change of something, we want to know how much of it we have, right? That's, that's the y value. This is rate of change of y. And so with constant rate of change, we've got this easy way to calculate what, what would this be? What is each little k delta x? What is that? <laughs> yeah, Katie. I think K is the, the y value of the purple line, um, and then the change in x is the distance between where the purple line begins. Yeah, and when we multiply those together, so we get this thing that we get is, what is the meaning of that? What does it mean? Aaron, any idea? It's the accumulated value. Right, it's a little bit of change. It's a little bit of change of y, right? That's what delta y is. So it's the accumulated, a little bit of an accumulation of y. Okay, and so that's, that's what we're, so we have the rate. We want accumulation. We have how fast this thing is changing, and we want to know how much of it we have. And that's what accumulation is, the accumulation of this quantity given the rate function. So that's why we create this step graph, because we can now actually make some progress on the mathematics towards Adding up the little bits of, of the quantity. OK. I got two more questions for you. Go. Talk to your partner. So name all the characteristics of the pink step graph that you can. And then consider the third interval, which I'll highlight here. Everybody's talking to their partner.
Okay, Andrew, tell me some characteristics of our pink step graph. Uh, say that each interval uh, is a size of uh, 0.3. And how do we denote the size of an interval? So what's our symbol for that? Uh, delta x. Delta x is 0.3. Agree with that? Cool. What else? Anything else you notice about the pink step graph? We're we using the mid on this one? Yep, using the mid based on the midpoints. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Yeah, so so we're basing our step function on a changing rate. So those constant rates change every interval, absolutely. Oh yeah, go ahead. You can. Good. A equals zero. Starting value is zero. How many intervals are there? How many intervals are we showing? Ten intervals. Shown. Okay. It keeps going, but I'm just showing ten. Okay. So now this third interval here, from point six to point nine, has a constant value here. So, how is that constant value for that interval determined? Savannah? Um, by the formula? Okay, so she wants the left x formula. Crystal, you agree with that? Oh, sorry, what's that? Okay, so does the midpoint formula give us that constant value right there. Is that what that is? Want to keep going? Mary. So she's talking about the midpoint formula. Does it give us that constant value? Approximation. What do you think? Jack? The midpoint, does it give that constant value right there? What value? There's a lot of different values going on here. What? Okay, so from the beginning, say the whole thing. Which is what? Yeah. From point six to point nine. Point seven five. Okay. Is that the value of 
the constant rate of change, 0.75. The corresponding y value is the constant. The corresponding y value of what? The corresponding y value of what gives us that constant rate of change? Isabel? <coughs> yeah, the corresponding value of the blue graph. Yeah, the rate, the rate function. The corresponding value of the rate function at 0.75 gives us the constant value for that whole interval. So what does, what does the mid function do? It takes all these x values in here and does what to them? Every x value in that interval, it takes all those x values, and what does the mid function do to those? Yeah, Richard. It changes them all to 0.75, and then, so then why does why do we get the constant rate up here like this? Go ahead, keep going. We got off track there. Will, what were you going to say? <laughs> it's okay, though. The reason that we get that line by making all those x values 0.75 is because at that specific um, point of x, 0.75, it has a specific y value. By right. making all those points of uh, 0.75, it will give all of them that y value. Making straight line. Well said. Very well said. We change all those x values to 0.75, so when we plug 0.75 into the r function, Every single time, we're going to get what? That same value, r.75, and therefore it's constant across there. So how do we represent that y value symbolically? Question mark equals? Yeah, Connor. Okay, so r? Yep, r.75. That's the symbolic exact representation of every y value on that step function. That's its constant rate of r of 0.75. <clears throat> okay, so this function step x, this pink function, can be written a different way. How can we, what's another way we can write that step function? kind of function is the step function? Is it equal to the midpoint function? The midpoint function spits out what kind of value? The midpoint function spits out what kind of value? X values or Y values? X values. It spits out X values. In any given interval, the midpoint will change all the X values into a single X value, particularly the middle one. So is step equal to mid? No. no. Step is a type of rate function. It comes from the rate function. When we do what? Put in the x value. R of x? Is step x equal to r of x? Um, <coughs> Yeah, so we want that we want to plug in all the x values so in a particular interval the mid will take all those x values and change it to the mid and then we'll keep plugging so then for that whole interval we keep plugging in the same value the mid and we get this constant rate out because all those y values are the same Okay, so now I'm referring to this sum here. How does that relate to the graph? What does each part represent? So by each part, I mean truly each part. Like, what is R3? What is delta X? What is R2 times delta X? Okay, and then what does the whole sum represent? Go, talk to your partner.
So how do these R's, R1, R2, R3, how do those relate to the graph? How do those relate to the graph? Bailey. So I'm just, how, how do those R, these R values, how do they relate to the picture? So what are they in relation to the picture? Tell me your name in the tank top. Yeah. Ashlyn. Ashlyn. Um, it's the rate at Yeah, so it's the value of these, the Y values of these steps, right? These are, the, these are the constant rates. Those R values are the constant rates. All right, delta X is what in this case? 0.3 every time, right? It's the distance between the red dots. So what about like a whole term? Say R2 delta X. What does that mean? Roman. R2 delta X would be the actual value, the Y value of it. If you're, time, if you're multiplying the delta X by whatever rate you're at at that interval. Okay. So is it a Y value? Is it really a Y value? It's a portion of the Y. And what do we call that? Yes, it's a, it's a little bit or a little change in y, right? It's a little change in the quantity, which is different than the actual y value. So the y value, we track the y value as it goes through changes, right? That's like, uh, what was it, what did you do? The height function, right? You had the height, and you looked at each change, and each time the height changed, then you had a new height. So the height is y. And then this would be like a little change in height for that change in time. Okay, so what about the whole sum? What does the whole sum represent? Charles? Uh, total change in y. From? Yeah. From where to where? From 0 to 3, right? So this would be the total change in y. Take in in little bits, right? The total change in y from starting at a equals zero up till three, because that's the that's the last little bit that we add on. Okay, so this is now we're getting now we're getting to the realm of accumulation, right? We're accumulating little bits of y, and if we if we knew what the starting value of y was, and we had the whole change for the first three then we could have the new, ch the new value of y after three units, right? Okay, so what above shows the accumulation from x equals 0 to x equals 1.2? So in this, in this expression here, what would show the accumulation of the quantity from x equals 0 to 1.2? Rewrite it with summation notation. Can you do it? So see if you agree on the, your answer to the question. We write it with summation notation.
Okay, Nathan, this one's for you. What above shows the accumulation from zero to one point two? What would you? How would you do that? You mean like the sum of the point? Something in all this stuff up here and represent the total accumulation starting at zero, or the total change in the quantity from zero to one point two. So what would that be? Well, like the sum of all the all the bits, all the, the R2 delta X plus the R3 delta X. Oh. So all 10 of them? No, 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 that's the up until, up until 1.2. So what is that? So 1.2 is right here. Yeah. So be specific, so what? Gives me that accumulation up to that point. He wants up until R of four delta X. LJ, what do you think? Uh, yeah. He agrees. You guys agree? So we want the the little bit of accumulation from the first interval, the second interval, the third interval, and the fourth interval, which will take us up to one point two. Agree? Okay, how do we rewrite that as a sum? Just so we get, we did this a while ago, so let's review that. So remember we want to, this is our index. We'll start it at one. And then how far do we want that index to go? What's the last value of the index? Four. four. And then this is what every term looks like. So rather than write it out four times, the whole the idea of this is we can just write out the term once because they all look the same. So what will it be? Rj of r times. See, all the terms look like that. We're going to add up four of them, starting at one, going up to four. Anybody have a question so far? Okay, now with that in mind, what would show the accumulation from 0 to 2.2? Think about that. So from zero, talk with your partner. You want the accumulation from zero to two point two. Saskia, yes. how'd you do on this one? Talk to me. Um, we counted it out, okay. and it went into like the eighth interval. Okay. And so then it would just be the same thing that we wrote there, except the top number instead of being four would be eight. Okay, so, so you want to add up the first eight yeah. intervals. So extend this red box to encompass the first eight intervals. What do you think? Agree with that? What would that be the accumulation to? If we did all the way through the eighth interval? Yeah, Ben? That would give us all the way to 2.4. Yeah, wouldn't that, that, wouldn't that give us all the way to 2.4? Uh, we'll just do the, do it to the seventh. Do it to the seventh. And then add 0.1 times R8. Why do you want to do that, Ben? Because that's the, what's left over. And in the eighth interval, you only have 0.1, not the whole. So he only wants to add up the first seven. Uh, 
of R j delta x. He doesn't want to add the whole eighth one. But you do want to add something. So we're going to 2.2. So what is the rate from 2.1 to 2.2? R8. So the rate is R8. But do we have a full interval of delta x? What do we got? One third, which is zero point one, right? So if you go all the way and add all the way through R eight delta x, you actually accumulate all the way to two point four. So we've got this partial interval now. So we've got that the the rate of eight, but we don't want a, a full delta x. We just in this case want point one of it, or, or point one for the, the little part of the interval. Okay, so this is really important because if we want an accumulation function, meaning accumulation function means pick any value of x that you want. So right there, or right there. And we want to know the accumulation starting at a up to any given value of x. Well, this little partial interval at the, at the end is going to be important, right? Because just full intervals themselves do not get to the x values in between. So if I just randomly pick an x value here, I picked 2. Look, it didn't, it's, it's got a partial interval at the end. It doesn't have the full interval. I'll randomly do it again. Again, I landed in the, in the middle. See? So an accumulation function would be for any value of x, what's the accumulation up to that point? Most of the time, it's going to have a, a little partial interval added on. Okay, someone have a question? If you said it was one third of the interval, how come it's 0.1? Because the interval, well, how wide are the intervals? 0.3. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's one third. Not bad. That's right. It's too basic. No, no problem. <laughs> okay, so let's. <clears throat> okay, so um, this is what we want. We want an accumulation quantity. Now notice I've changed it's the same situation except I've changed it to left. Okay? I've changed it to be left sides. And we want this function. This is what we're after. An accumulation function. Given any value of x, how much of the quantity have we accumulated up to that value of x? Okay? So let's go back to 1.2. This is the one we talked about before. What's nice about 1.2? What's not very nice about it? It lands at the end of an interval. So all we have to do is what? Just add up the first four, right? But the question is, if we want a function, we can't have a... These, where do these r's come from? They come from our r function, right? So we need to write our function in terms of the r function. So what are these rates? r of what? r of what? We can't just write r1, r2, r3, r4. We need to have actual values. Where do those values come from? We know those values come from the original rate function. So what I want you to do is write out what input values will give us r1, r2, r3, r4. Go. So what input values will you get? Or what input values do you need to get these rates? Now, again, notice I changed it to left. I changed it to left. So this is the rate at the left side, the rate at the left side, the rate at the left side, which gives you that whole constant rate. So what will, the, what will R1 be? R of what? Zero. Lots of people are saying zero. Agree with that? Yeah. Yep. R of zero. So it's the R at that point right there. That gives us, and then we set that to be the constant rate for the whole interval. Then we have R of, for R2, 0 0.3. R3, 0.6, and then 
0.9. So 0.9 is right here, just to check it. It's the, it's the left side of the fourth interval. So R of 0.9 is right there, and it's the, you can't really see it too well, but it's the constant rate for that whole interval. So now what we want to do is write those in terms of A, those same input values, in terms of A and delta X. So pretend A starts anywhere, okay? And delta X is anything. How would you get these numbers, 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 0 0.9? So we want to write those in terms of A and delta X. Go. Is the task clear? Does it make sense? So instead of putting the actual input values in, how, do we, how would we get those input values if we, from A, the values of A and delta X? Okay. Some people are getting it up here. How about in the back? Last people getting it. Let's see. Daniel, did you get it? Tell me what the first R1 is. Uh, you want, so what would the input for R be? Just A. Okay, so I want to just make sure you weren't saying A times delta X in the input. Agree with that? Yes, yeah, so if it's the left side of the first interval, that's the same as our starting value, right? Makes sense. Okay, next one. Nicole. Nicole, next one. So what about R2? A plus delta X. Why is it that? So if we want the left side of the second interval is right there. We're going to start at A and we're going to go over 1 delta X. And it will give us the left side of the second interval, right? Okay, next one. Crystal. Yep. That's supposed to be a delta. Okay, and then finally. Yeah, once you get started, it's easy. So getting started is the hard part. Once you get started, it's easy. So let's check that. The fourth interval is here, right? So 0 0.9 is right there. Is that A plus 3 delta X? So A plus 1, 2, 3 delta x gives us the left side of the fourth interval. Okay, so our j value in the summation is the interval number. So we have the first, the second, the third, and the fourth. That's our j value. So in other words, so this is, this is uh, 1, first interval, second interval, third interval, fourth interval. So we want to come up with a general formula if we're doing this in summation notation. We know they all look like this. R of something times delta x. So given that j is the number of the interval, what is the something that we plug in in terms of j? Can you figure it out? So when j is 1, we put in a. When j is 2, we want the input to be a plus delta x. When j is 3, we want it to be a plus, so that's a 2, sorry. No, no, yeah, that's, this is a 2. When j is 3, we want the input to be a plus 2 delta x. When j is 4, we want the input to be a plus 3 delta x. 
So what formula is the input into, in, into R? What, is it easy or something? No. Oh, okay. You got it, Jeff? So take it, just take 30 seconds to think. So everyone see if you can figure it out. What formula are we going to put in here? Jimmy, did you get it? Tell me. She wants A plus J minus 1 times delta X. People are nodding. That's it. So every one of these is a rate times a change in x. And the input into the rate is going to be, we found the pattern, it's always going to be a plus one less number of delta x's than the interval that we're in. Right? One <laughs> less delta x's than the interval that we're in. So if we're in the fifth interval, we're going to do a plus four delta x's. If we're in the hundredth interval, it's going to be a plus 99 delta x's will get us to the left side of that interval. And we want the rate there times the change in x. OK, but so but what's wrong with what's kind of the problem with this? We talked about it earlier. So there's, there's an issue with this, which is what? Uh, if you have like something in the middle of an interval. Yeah. This, this will only work if you, your x value lands at the end of an interval. Most x values don't. Most x values don't. Can I go on to the next screen? So we just got that. We just all we have to do now is just we have to add on a little bit more for the partial interval. So 2.2. What do we say? We said we're going to add up the first seven. Is that all? plus a little more, right? There's going to be a little bit of the next interval, not the whole interval. So it's going to be the accumulation from part of that last interval. So it's the same example again, A of 2.2. Right there. So we're going to add up the first seven intervals. We already know how to do that. Plus we need that little bit more. So the first seven intervals, it's just the same thing we just did. But now going up to seven, going up to seven intervals. But now we add, to add a little bit more. So what is the little bit more that we need to add? We did it before. Do you remember? Saskia. Uh, R of eight times point one. R of eight times point one. But what's our goal? Our goal is a function of x. Okay, so just like before, we need to define what is that, what is that rate? R of what? J plus 10. What is it? Yeah, but we're not doing J's anymore. J's just sticks to the sum. So it, it truly is in this example, what is R of 8? R of 2.1. R of 2.1. And where does the point 1 come from? That's a distance, right? So it really comes from the 2.2 that we're at minus 2.1. Does that make sense? This is the distance starting at the left end to the x value that we have. That's that point 0.1 times the rate at the left end of the interval. Okay, now we want to write these 
that value 2.1, we want to write it in terms of 2.2. So given that I fall in this interval at 2.2 or at 2.3, how do I get the x value 2.1 from that? Do you remember? So I'm gonna, I fall in this interval here, the eighth interval. If I land at 2.2, if I land at 2.25 or 2.41, from those values, how can I get the value 2.1? What is it? Someone's thinking it. What is it? Um, it's part of it. What? What function will give us 2.1 from any x value in that interval? Yeah. The left function, right? Isn't this left of 2.2? And this is also, that's left of 2.2. So given this x value, 2.2, we want to take the rate at the left side of the interval that it's in. And then the distance we want is from, from that left side to the x value. That's how much of the interval we want. Should make sense. Does it make sense? See, the goal is to get everything in terms of this 2.2 and A and delta X. <clears throat> the light bulb come on? Because what is left of 2.2 is? That's 2.1. This is left of 2.2, which equals 2.1. So let's put it all together. Here we go. Tell me what I'm pointing out there. What is that? You're so smart. Okay, what is that? Not as confident. <laughs> any value of x. That black line could be anywhere here. All right, I'm just I'm just choosing a place for it. It could be anywhere. It's a function of x. We have the accumulation as a function of the ending point. So it's any x value where we accumulate to. What's that? Will. And so how can you succinctly say that? If that's x, what is that? Succinctly say what you just said. The start of the end of the Even more succinctly. Left of x. Yeah, to use the function, right? Left of x. It's the x value at the left end of the interval. Left of x. What does the accumulation function consist of? Two things. What's the first thing it consists of? Aaron. Um, well, it's kind of, there's kind of like two big chunks, two, two parts to it. So I'm asking about the first part of it. What's the first part of the accumulation function? We're going to go a little bit long, and then I'll give you, I'll give you time back on another day. What's that? A plus delta x. A plus delta x, Connor. Um, is, it, is it like the first part is all the whole intervals? Exactly. It's the sum of all the whole intervals. So it's the sum of the bits for the full intervals, right? But then we also need a little bit. A little bit from what? Um, the leftover interval. Probably a little bit more from the last partial delta x. So how do we? <laughs> what's the sum of for many full intervals? So tell me the input. What's the input for the first? R value? A. A plus delta x. A plus 2 delta. And we just keep going like that, right? We keep going like that. And we get this. Now the question is, how far do we go? How many full intervals are there? So we've done this before. I'll do blue. No, I'll do black. So I'm not asking you to count in this particular example, but just in any situation, 
How many intervals, full intervals, do we have? How do we calculate that? Does anybody remember? You tell me. Is that what you're going to say? Yeah, good. Yeah, it's the floor function of x minus a over delta x. Take the distance, divide by the distance from x to there, divide by the width of each, and then cut off the decimal part. Just take the whole number value of intervals. Excellent. OK, then we got what we got left. Now we got to get the accumulation from the last part interval. So it's going to be a rate times a distance. It's going to be the rate evaluated where? Left of x. And then we want the distance will be from what to x? Starting where? Left x. And that's a multiplication term? Yes. Yep, because it's, it's, everything here is, everything here is r times delta x, r times delta x. That's, we're adding up a bunch of these. There's a bunch of full intervals here, and then we have one more for a partial interval, r times a little change in x, right? Mm -hmm. Any questions? It's better than you think. It's good stuff. So there it is, OK? So your, uh, your homework. You'll need to put this into graphing calculator along with your, the step function file that you created. So now you're going to add on the accumulation function into that. Okay, I've, I gave you a little sheet that gives, a, like, this gives you some tips, like how to, how to get the summation sign. Um, actually, you just all you have to do is replicate what's on the sheet. All right, so I gave you a sheet that says this is how you put it in the graphing calculator. Then you're going to use that to answer some of the homework questions. Actually actually use it. Uh, now we're, we're doing it. Start your homework early. I was having some printing issues this morning. Okay. So I only had to print three of my drafts. There and should I have only been three. There were three. Well, I did. Let, me, let me turn off the. Turn off the video.